I've talked about meteorites on this channel before. It's always nice when the universe delivers the building blocks of the solar system to our front door. But did you know that we've gone out and actually sampled pieces of asteroids and comets before? Not just once, but multiple times? You know, the stuff that usually we have to wait to get broken up and then trapped in our gravity well, and then maybe survive burning through the atmosphere and then land, and then we have to go out and find it, and maybe it gets destroyed by water and frost and all that kind of weathering stuff, if we're lucky. So not only have we sampled asteroids and comets, we've actually done it multiple times. The Genesis mission in 2006 collected samples from the coma of Comet Vilt 2, where it went in the trail of the coma and caught particles that were ablated off by the sun in stuff called aerogel, which is a very cool material. The Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency, or JAXA, has gone out and sampled two asteroids. With their Hayabusa sample return mission, they sampled the S-type asteroid Itokawa, and then the Hayabusa 2 mission sampled the C-type asteroid Ryugu. So Hayabusa 2 returned to Earth December 6, 2020, completing a just over six-year mission, not including the planning stages. And there's a lot of planning and waiting that goes on in planetary science. And that also includes sample analysis, where they released a paper last week, December 20th, 2021, just over a year after returning the samples to Earth, where they released a preliminary analysis of the Ryugu samples that were returned. The paper is open access, and you can go and read it for yourself, download it for free. What I want, what I want to talk about today is that the samples appear to be consistent with a CI chondrite meteorite. That's what their one of their main conclusions was. So CI chondrites, C stands for carbonaceous, which means that there's a lot of carbon compounds in it. And I stands for Ivuna, which is the prototype meteorite that the class was named after. That was, so that means that it was the first meteorite that was this specific chemical composition. And there's a couple other ones, but they're fairly rare. The carbonaceous chondrite class in general formed in the presence of water ice. And so it formed beyond what's known as the snow line, where it's far enough away from the sun that water and ammonia and carbon monoxide all form solid crystalline materials. And so they're not in the vapor phase like they are closer to the sun in the early solar nebula. The CI chondrites in particular are of interest because they are what's termed primitive chondrites. They have no chondrules, which a chondrule is these little spheres of once molten proto-meteorite material that was melted in some sort of flash heating phase and then crystallized out. They don't have any of that. And so they're mostly just agglomerations of ice and dust. And that dust is a very early solar system product. And so what's cool about the CI chondrites is that they have a lot of volatiles and they have a chemical composition most closely aligned with the original solar nebula compared to other meteorite classes. As a result, in discussing meteorite or planetary petrology, we often normalize the chemical compositions to CI chondrites, especially for the rare earth elements, or REEs. Why do we do that? Well, one of the reasons is that the abundance of even-numbered elements is more than the nearest two odd-numbered elements. And so this is what's known as the Otto Harkins rule, or the Otto Harkins effect, where there's kind of a zigzag pattern in element abundance. So if you plot the REEs, which are a continuous atomic series, those will form the zigzag pattern, which is kind of hard to tell patterns and differences relative to one another. Where when you normalize to CI chondrites, it creates essentially a flat line, a baseline, and then your deviations from that are much easier to see. But what's important here is that we know in the literature what we're normalizing to. The two most common normalization factors are from Anders and Gravesi in 1989, and then McDonough and Son in 1995. These two chemical compositions from CI chondrites differ slightly, and I'm wondering if after these Ryuga samples are go beyond the preliminary analysis phase, if we're going to have you know the most pristine ever CI chondrites to normalize our petrology data to. And once we better characterize these samples, they will further inform future exploration missions. Where the Ryugu asteroid was a C-type asteroid, they didn't know it was a CI-type. And so now we can go back and say, if this was a CI-type asteroid, you can plug that data into models of albedo and remote sensing data from Earth and use that to better inform future planetary exploration missions and targeting and classification of asteroids that we won't be able to sample and now all we have to do is wait.